the fundraiser gala was in full swing, a kaleidoscope of laughter and champagne flutes clinking against the lively jazz ensemble. I smoothed my deep red gown, forcing a smile as I made my rounds greeting the socialites and donors. My husband Alex stood by my side, his warm presence a comforting anchor amidst the pomp. That's when I saw him, Derek Montgomery, swagger through the entrance like he owned the place. His slick pompadour and tailored suit exuded an arrogant charm, but his eyes, those cold, cruel eyes, narrowed the moment they found Alex. Well, well, if it isn't Mr. Goody Two-Shoes himself, Derek sneered, sauntering over with a predatory gait. I tensed, my grip tightening on Alex's arm. Derek, this is neither the time nor place. For what? He laughed, bitter and mocking. To show this self-righteous prick that good deeds don't pay the bills around here? That's enough. Alex stated firmly, his jaw clenched. We're here for a worthy cause, not to indulge your petty grievances. The room fell into an uneasy hush, all eyes trained on the escalating confrontation. Derek glowered, leaning uncomfortably close. You talk a big game for a man who couldn't protect what matters most. His gaze shifted to me, a cruel smirk curling his lips. How's that pretty wife of yours handling life in the real world? White-hot anger blazed in my chest as his vile insinuation hit home, but before I could retort, Alex stepped forward, his normally gentle eyes burning with uncharacteristic fury. I don't know what deluded vendetta you're peddling, Derek, but leave my wife out of this. His voice was low, dangerous. One more word and I'll show you exactly how I handle things in the real world. A tense silence stretched between them, the underlying threat palpable. Then, without warning, Derek lunged, only to be swiftly intercepted by two brutish men in ill-fitting suits. They seized his arms, dragging him backwards as he thrashed and hurled profanities. We'll finish this, Walsh, Derek's voice dripped with venom. You can count on that! I watched, stunned as the bodyguards hauled Derek away, his parting words chilling me to the core. My hands trembled as reality came crashing down. Alex was in grave danger, and it was all because of my past I'd fought so hard to bury. Derek's rage, his menacing implications, I knew that look, that simmering hatred. It was the fury that festered in the underbelly of this city, a raging fire stoked by old mafia feuds. Suddenly, the decadent trappings surrounding us lost all meaning. The only thing that mattered was the man by my side, the one I loved more than life itself. Stealing my nerves, I turned to Alex, my decision made. No more lies. No more hiding. If I was going to keep him safe, I had to confront the very past that endangered him. The ride home was silent, weighted with unspoken truths. I stared unseeingly out the car window, my mind racing through the implications of Derek's threats. When we finally arrived, Alex closed the front door behind us with a solemn click. Lena. His voice was heavy with trepidation. What the hell was that back there? I closed my eyes, steadying my nerves. This was it, the moment to unveil the secrets I'd buried for so long. Turning to face him, I willed my voice to remain steady. Derek is connected to certain circles, dangerous circles with long memories and even longer grudges. Alex's brow furrowed as realization dawned. You're talking about the mafia, aren't you? When I didn't respond, he raked his fingers through his hair. Lena, please... Whatever this is, you need to tell me. I can't protect you if I'm in the dark. His earnest concern gripped my heart. With a tremulous breath, I began recounting the history I'd long tried to forget. My family tree is complicated, gnarled with Omerta's twisted roots going back generations. That life, that bloody coat of silence, I swallowed hard. It courses through my veins, for better or worse. Alex's eyes widened in disbelief, but he remained silent, letting me continue. My uncle Tony, he's high up in their ranks, respected, feared. He took me under his wing after my parents. I faltered, the old grief resurfacing like a phantom ache. Aunt Gia always warned me about getting too close to that life, begged me to keep my head down, find a good man, and start over clean. A wistful smile played across my lips. That's where you came in. Alex regarded me with a pained expression, torn between the woman he loved and the harsh truths now laid bare. Why didn't you tell me? He asked, his voice strained. We're supposed to be partners through everything. Because I wanted to leave it all behind. My hands balled into fists as the words tumbled out in a torrent. I watched that life destroy my family, rip us apart from the inside. 
I refuse to let it taint the life I built with you. Silence hung between us, laden with unspoken recriminations and the weight of this brutal revelation. Then Alex's face softened with resignation, and he pulled me into a fierce embrace. You don't have to go through this alone, he murmured fiercely. Not anymore. We'll face it head on, together. Whatever trouble this Derek has brought to our door, we'll send it packing. A profound sense of gratitude washed over me at his steadfast devotion. With remorse, I realized keeping my past sequestered had only made me more vulnerable. But no longer. Alex was the strongest ally I could hope for, which meant if Derek dared make good on his threats, he would encounter a united front more formidable than he could ever imagine. The next few weeks were a tenuous calm before the storm. Alex and I went about our routines, determined not to let Derek's unhinged threats disrupt our daily lives. But the serpent's venom had been released, slithering through the cracks of our once peaceful existence. It was a crisp Thursday morning when the other shoe finally dropped. I was meeting a client when my phone rang with the shrill tone I dreaded. It was the front office at Alex's school. Mrs. Walsh, I'm afraid there's been an incident involving your husband. Ice lanced through my veins as I exchanged hurried farewells and raced to the parking lot. The entire drive uptown, my knuckles turned white, gripping the steering wheel as scenarios of violence played out in my mind. When I burst through the main entrance, Alex sat hunched in the principal's office, his shirt stained with dark splotches. My heart seized until he raised his gaze, revealing a busted lip and mottled bruise along his jawline. Oh, Alex. I rushed to his side, cradling his face in my trembling hands. What happened? Derek goddamn Montgomery happened. That's what? He growled, anger smoldering in his eyes, barged into my classroom ranting about unfinished business. Next thing I knew, he clocked me across the face, yelling he was sending me a message. White-hot fury roared through me, scalding away any remnants of my former complacency. This waking nightmare wouldn't end until I took decisive action. That evening, as I gingerly applied an ice pack to Alex's swollen cheek, he fixed me with a determined stare. You need to handle this, Lena. Through your... channels. I opened my mouth to protest, but he shook his head adamantly. No more avoiding the past. That maniac came after me, put innocent students at risk with his deranged vendetta. It's time to fight fire with fire. His words struck a chord deep within me, reverberating through the marrow in my bones. The old adage rang true. You can't escape karma's iron grip forever. Hardening my resolve, I gave a solemn nod. You're right. It's time I made things right, once and for all. Without further delay, I retrieved my burner phone and typed out a coded message. Two words that set wheels in motion, resurrecting the part of me I thought had died years ago. It's time. The reply was instantaneous. I understand. Where and when? I responded with the location, an upscale restaurant downtown, one with old mafia ties embedded in its very foundation, a place to discreetly broker the pact I was about to make. There was only one road forward now, no more half-measures, no more walking the straight and narrow while threats loomed, not when everything I held dear was caught in the crosshairs. If Derek coveted vengeance, then by gods old and new, that's precisely what he would reap and I would be the sword that delivered it. The next evening, I strode into Petrino's, the upscale Italian eatery that had been a front for mafia dealing since my great-grandfather's time. Slipping through the back entrance, I descended a flight of stairs into the dimly lit underbelly, a realm where matters of grave importance were decided away from prying eyes. Uncle Tony already sat at the head of a long, mahogany table, his burly form cutting an intimidating presence. Two of his capos flanked him, hardened men with eyes like tarnished stone. They straightened as I entered, but Tony waved them down with a gruff nod. "'There's my girl,' he rumbled, stubby cigar clenched between his teeth. "'Should have known you'd find your way back sooner or later.' I lifted my chin, struggling to keep any waver from my voice. "'I didn't come here to rejoin the fold, Uncle. This is a reckoning of sorts.' His eyebrows arched inquisitively as I recounted the escalating torment Derek had subjected Alex to, his chest swelling with barely contained outrage. When I finished, a hardened glint crept into his dark eyes. So this punk wants to mess with La Famiglia, does he? Tony pounded a meaty fist on the table, making it rattle. 
Well, he'll damn well regret the day he bought into whatever deluded slight set him on this crusade. I aim to make sure of it, I said, my jaw set with grim resolve. But I'll need help, bodies, munitions, whatever resources you can spare. One of the capos made a disapproving grunt, but Tony silenced him with an upraised hand. You got a plan for this vendetta? he asked gruffly. I nodded, laying out the seeds of my stratagem, using my community outreach contacts to dig up any incriminating evidence on Derek and his crew, exploiting his own paper trail of illegal dealings to remove him from the equation. With the right leverage, we can suffocate him without spilling blood, I concluded. Cut off the mafioso's air supply, so to speak. There was a tense pause as Tony considered this, pensive regs of smoke furling from his nostrils. Finally, he gave a resolute grunt of assent. You got a hell of a fire in your eyes, just like your old man, he said, almost admiringly. I'll round up some troops, put some feelers out on the street about this punk's activities. Just say the word, and we'll drown this fool in his own misdeeds. A grim smile tugged at my lips as I felt the first stirrings of retribution take root. Derek had made a grave miscalculation. He'd threatened the wrong family. Now he would confront a juggernaut he never saw coming, fueled by the rage of a protective wife pushed too far. Prepare the men, I stated, a cold promise lacing my words. It's time to send Derek Montgomery a message he won't soon forget. Over the next few days, the safe, ordinary world Alex and I had carved out became a meticulously calculated staging ground. Uncle Tony's intelligencers began funneling me detailed information on Derek's tawdry dealings, money laundering, racketeering, extortion. Every insidious transaction was another brushstroke in the blackmail portrait I was painting. One by one, the shady dominoes would fall until this puffed-up degenerate was boxed into a corner of his own making. With no one to blame but himself, and as it all came together, only one thought blazed in my mind, like a righteous apocalypse. I'm coming for you, Derek. Hell hath no fury like a familia scorned. The dossier, weighing heavily in my hands, felt like a graven idol, a profane offering soon to be laid at the altar of reckoning. I traced the embossed lettering with my fingertip, Derek Montgomery, Criminal Activities. Months of meticulous investigation, all the sordid details of his mafia underbelly laid bare in stark, damning evidence. Reams of financial records, surveillance photos, witness testimony— entire compendium of ammunition to bury this snake once and for all. When the front door opened, I turned to see Alex entering home from campus. His features were etched in deep lines, aged by the looming threats he could never escape. Hey, he said softly, crossing to where I stood in the living room. His gaze fell to the dossier with a heaviness. I take it this is it, I gave a solemn nod, letting the weight of the evidence fill the silence. Tomorrow's reckoning would be the catalyst. For better or worse, it would alter the trajectory of our lives irrevocably. Alex seemed to read my thoughts, tenderly cradling my face in his calloused palms. No matter what happens, I'm with you to the very end, he murmured fiercely. This bastard reckoning had better be ready to face a force more powerful than he can fathom. Slivers of anxiety lanced through me at the solemnity of his words his conviction only amplifying the enormity of the gambit we were about to make. But his devotion was like a steadying anchor, grounding me when the tides of vengeance threatened to pull me adrift. Leaning up, I kissed him hard, memorizing the taste of his lips, the scent of his skin, a reminder of all we cherished and were willing to fight for. When we finally parted, breathless, the flames of determination burned bright in my eyes. Get some rest, I told him gathering the dossier against my chest. Because tomorrow all hell's breaking loose. That night, I sat alone in the dark, reverently paging through the compendium of perfidy we had assembled on Derek. Each document seemed to accuse and condemn in its own mute way, a legacy of personal failings soon to be his undoing. By morning's first light, a sleek black sedan was idling in our driveway. Its tinted windows were a void, the vehicle's arrival heralded by nothing more than a brief text. Time to go to work. Pressing a tender kiss to Alex's brow as he slept, I gathered the dossier and slipped out into the pre-dawn chill. The rear door opened and I slid inside, met by the impassive gazes of two merciless-looking mobsters acting as escorts. Not a word was spoken during the tense drive into the heart of the city. 
we navigated a labyrinth of alleyways and side streets, each turn carrying us deeper into the underworld's shadowed embrace. Finally, we arrived at a derelict whiskey distillery, an abandoned relic concealing one of the most important summits about to take place. As we disembarked, my eyes traced the peeling facade, reading the fading letters like an ominous portent. Skenley Distillery, the spirit of reckoning. Clutching the dossier's manifold evidence to my chest, like a Templar cradling a holy relic, I crossed the threshold into the scrum of armed mobsters gathered within, the air hung thick with the reek of stale whiskey and smoldering cigarettes. Somewhere amidst the surly mass, Derek was about to receive the solemn summoning of a lifetime. This day would become his demonic tribunal, and I the arbiter of his deliverance. One way or another, the sordid drama engulfing our lives would finally reach its crescendo. Vengeance, that cruel, double-edged mistress, was about to be served. The cavernous distillery whispered with hushed murmurings as my heels clicked across the concrete floor. The air hung thick with the scent of stale whiskey and cigarette smoke, the perfume of the underworld's direst conclaves. Bulky sentries in ill-fitting suits eyed me warily as I passed, their knuckles blanched around the grips of semi-automatic rifles. But a path cleared at my approach, almost reverentially, until I stood before the looming silhouette of my uncle. "'It's go time, kiddo,' Tony growled around the cigar clamped between his teeth. "'Montgomery's being brought in as we speak.' The gravity of the situation bore down with inexorable weight. After weeks of plotting, intelligence gathering, brokering backroom favors— the pieces had finally locked into place for the coup de grace. I nodded, squaring my shoulders as the main hangar doors groaned open. A battered black suburban lurched through the entrance, body panels dented and scarred, a perfect metaphor for its disgraced passenger. Two brutish capos hauled Derek from the rear compartment, his suit disheveled and a trickle of blood leaking from his split eyebrow. Well, well, the conquering heroes return— he slurred, looking utterly unrepentant despite the circumstances. To what do I owe this gracious welcoming party? I stepped forward, the damning dossier gripped against my ribs, the only sound my heels cracking against the floor. Make no mistake, Derek, this reckoning is of your own vain creation, I stated, voice ringing with steely conviction. Your deranged crusade against my husband, against my family, ends here and now. A sneer twisted his busted features, the old vitriol flashing behind his eyes. Think you got it all figured out, don't you, sweetheart? But you have no idea the seismic waves you just— His tirade was cut short by Tony's beefy palm crashing against his jaw with a meaty thwack. Derek's head whipped to the side, spraying a fine mist of blood and spittle. You'll shut your damn mouth and listen for once, punk Tony growled, his voice dripping menace. We got enough firepower here to make the Smokies think the Cuban Missile Crisis kicked off again, and that's just the warm-up. I stepped forward, thumbing open the dossier with a deliberate snap. What you failed to grasp in your pathetic pursuit of payback is the depth of the weapons our side wields. You see these? I let the sheaf of incriminating documents cascade open with a flutter of paper fall. These are the instruments that will become your prison cell's wallpaper— every shady deal, every underhanded transaction. It's all here, Derek. In triplicate. His bravado seemed to waver slightly as I pressed on, relentless. We have the paper trail, the financial records, eyewitness testimony, everything needed to ensure you're made a permanent state resident under maximum security accommodations. A profound, unsettling silence fell over the gathered mafiosi, everyone realizing the gauntlet had been thrown. This was it the point of no return. Derek's jaw worked furiously, his mind clearly scrambling for any shred of leverage or control over the situation. But he found none. In his manic quest for vengeance, he'd wandered into a killing ground meticulously prepared, with his own misdeeds serving as the ammunition to bury him alive. "'So what'll it be, tough guy?' Tony rumbled, knuckles cracking like a gunshot. "'You want us to hand-deliver these receipts for your downfall to the D.A.?' Or are you going to be a good little mookie and walk away while you still can? For an interminable moment, the air crystallized with suspense, every eye trained on Derek. Then, almost imperceptibly, the frantic bravado drained from his features like a great whooshing exhale. He'd been outmaneuvered, laid bare, and he knew it. This isn't over, Lena, 
he growled, positively dripping impotent malice. You wait, this is just the beginning. But his hollowed threats rang utterly empty. With a curt nod from Tony, the capos seized him roughly, hauling his thrashing form back toward the SUV's yawning trunk. And just like that, the threat was neutralized. Derek's delusional crusade had come full circle, rendered a mere whimper thanks to those very same underhanded methods he'd sought to punish. As they hauled him away, I felt Alex's steadying presence at my side. No words were needed. The gleam of love and pride shining in his eyes said it all. I'd safeguarded our devotion, defending our future with the ferocity of a wounded lioness. The shadows that had dared intrude on our paradise had been beaten back into the night from whence they came. The monster had been slain. The next few weeks were a whirlwind as our meticulously assembled dossier on Derek made its rounds through the proper channels. With reams of ironclad evidence detailing his various crimes, the authorities had no choice but to pursue formal charges. When the news finally broke of his arrest on racketeering, extortion, and a laundry list of other mafia-related offenses, it sent shockwaves through the city. Derek Montgomery, the brash, young hotshot who'd been steadily securing a stranglehold on the underworld, had fallen spectacularly from grace. I watched the news coverage with a mixture of vindication and disbelief as Derek was perp-walked before a horde of news cameras, still defiantly spouting curses and vague threats. Seeing him in handcuffs, constrained and defanged, I couldn't resist a grim smile. "'Looks like someone's moment in the spotlight has lost its luster,' I remarked dryly. Alex draped his arm around me from behind, planting a kiss atop my head. "'I'll say. But I wouldn't trade this feeling for the world, knowing that smug bastard will be rotting behind bars where he belongs.' In the ensuing days, more lurid details began leaking about the extent of Derek's illicit operations— it seemed our dossier's revelations had cracked open a veritable Pandora's box of evidence tying him to a breathtaking array of criminal enterprises. The local news channels were utterly captivated, their talking heads feverishly dissecting every new court proceeding and legal maneuver. I shook my head in disbelief watching footage of Derek's once loyal capos, turning rats turning evidence against him, in a desperate bid to avoid the same fate. Damn. They're eating him alive from the inside out, Alex muttered darkly. When the first plea deal was announced, I let out a slow exhale. Derek's second-in-command and a vicious pit bull of a man named Frankie the Butcher Rossetti had agreed to full cooperation in exchange for a reduced sentence. In Machiavellian fashion, the underling had sacrificed the boss to save his own skin. One by one, domino after domino toppled, as more level upon level of incrimination began spilling forth. It was as if by dismantling Derek's empire, an entire incredible dimension of the city's criminal element had been laid brutally bare. Hard to believe, just a few months ago, that vengeful prick was closing in on us, Alex said remarked one night as we watched the late news recap. My hand found his, gripping tightly. But we fought back, we took the fight straight to his doorstep on our terms— he nodded solemnly. You know, when all this went down, part of me was terrified not just for my safety, but for you, having to dive back into that dark world you wanted so desperately to leave behind. Turning to face him fully, I cupped his stubbly cheek. Alex, keeping you safe, protecting our life together, that will always be my top priority, no matter what shadows need facing. The words hung in the air, laden with profundity before he pulled me into a soul-rending kiss that chased away any lingering demons. When we finally broke apart, our gazes locked, shining with the sort of unbreakable bond that had vanquished Derek in the first place. Finally, after what felt felt like an eternity of legal proceedings and mounting evidence, the inevitable occurred. Derek was convicted on a staggering array of charges and dramatically sentenced to 40 years in a maximum security federal prison. On the day of his sentencing, I sat vigil in the courtroom's crowded gallery to witness the historic moment with my own eyes. As the bailiffs led Derek in wardening the schadenfreude of a hard-fought victory, a haughty sneer twisted his battered features. I'll never forget the look of abject rage he shot in my direction, silently swearing unspoken but vain retribution. In that moment, the depraved depths of his sociopathic ego were laid utterly bare. Even in the face of total defeat, not an ounce of remorse or culpability darkened his eyes. Only then, 
watching him get dragged away to rot in the concrete hellscape of his own design, did the long ordeal truly feel over. The gun had been removed from our heads at head slash long last. Karma had demanded its bloody recompense. As I stood in the marbled atrium outside the courtroom, bathed in the golden lances of afternoon sunlight, I allowed myself a fragile, wavering smile. Derek's reign of terror had ended. Now a new chapter could finally begin. In the weeks after Derek's sentencing, a strange sort of calm began settling over our lives once more. Every day that ticked by without a threatening phone call or ominous message was another weight lifted from our shoulders. The night after his official transfer to federal prison, Alex and I shared a bottle of expensive Cabernet on the back patio, watching the fireflies winking in the gathering dusk. A comfortable quiet stretched between us, the kind born from weathering storms and emerging on the other side, battered but bonded ever tighter. You know, Alex murmured, refilling our glasses. I keep waiting to wake up and find out this was all some messed up dream. I let out a rueful chuckle, sipping the rich wine. Believe me, I've had the same thought more times than I can count ever since that first gala run-in. His face turned pensive, worrying the stem of his glass. For a while there, I was honestly terrified, Lena. Not just for my own safety, but for you, having to dive back into that dark world you'd clawed so hard to escape. Reaching across the table, I enfolded his hand in mine, giving it a reassuring squeeze. Alex, keeping the man I love safe will always be my top priority, no matter what shadows need confronting or how much karma demands payment. A tender smile played across his lips as our gazes met and held, twin pinpricks of steely resilience burning bright in shared understanding. He leaned forward, claiming my lips in a soul-searing kiss that tasted of redemption and relief. When we finally broke apart, my eyes drifted skyward, watching the stars emerge one by one like celestial pinholes of remembrance. Each brilliant diamond in the cosmos a memorial to the struggle we'd endured, and ultimately overcome. It's really over, isn't it? I murmured, almost to myself. That vile chapter of our lives is finally closed. More than closed, incinerated, Alex said with conviction. We rose from the ashes of Derek's sick vengeance like a phoenix, Lena. Nothing can tarnish how brightly our bond burns after that crucible. I felt the truth in his words, visceral and affirming. For so long, Derek's corrosive agenda had eaten away at the very foundations we'd built our relationship upon. Trust, honesty, partnership. By dismantling his pernicious ambitions, we'd reassembled those tenets stronger than ever before. The dark storm clouds had passed, affording us a vista of radiant new horizons and promising dawns yet to greet. We watched the skyline morph from navy to inky black, the celestial curtain drawing back to reveal the universe's dazzling choreography. Fireflies winked and strobed as if carrying on a clandestine conversation. No more looking over our shoulders, I said, voicing the epiphany that had taken root. This is our chance to start fresh, build new dreams from the ashes. Alex's eyes shone with wonder and resolution, a warm summer breeze ruffling his tousled hair. Then what are we waiting for? His face split into a roguish grin. After all, we've got the rest of our lives to start the next great adventure. Three months later, the quiet dam finally broke as we welcomed a new addition into our newly healed lives. Radiant and cherub-faced, our baby daughter Sydney arrived into the world on a crisp autumn morning, her adoring cries the sweetest melody. As I cradled her in the maternity ward's buttery light, Alex's arm draped tenderly across my shoulders the revelry of newfound peace and contentment blossomed in my chest like a vibrant sunrise. Out in the corridors bustled the endless pageantry of life, fractured bones mending, malignancies beating retreat. But here in this sanctum, a fresh new existence had taken her first, rosy-tinted breaths. A bright new aura to illuminate our path forward as a family, one no longer haunted by the toxic specters of our past, but brightly gilded by the indomitable fires of perseverance. Derek's malice and the soiled prophecies of karmic deliverance had been vanquished. Like a snake shedding its tarnished skin, we'd emerged from our tribulations renewed and emboldened. A pristine journey had commenced with Sydney's frail, fluttering heartbeat, one whose pages begged to be inscribed by the indelible ink of unconditional love, the purest antidote to any venom. No more fear or uncertainty. 
No more living under looming threats or retributive boogeymen, just my little family's shared radiance, glowing brighter with each passing sunrise.